morning. Hello. Hello, look, we're back on. We're here. We are recording. This is exciting stuff. Here we go. Hello, Molly. Nice to see you. Hello. So, um, hello and welcome to our second online Sunday service. Ah, Mona, hello. Um, we're really pleased you're joining us today and it was uh, really great to see um, so many of you watching last week and sharing it with your friends. Uh, my name's Maggie. And hi, I'm Nick. Um, we lead the Harrogate Vineyard Church together and you are very welcome to join us again. Uh, congratulations to those of you who remembered the clocks went forwards and you <laughs> woke up and you're here with us. Well done. Um, commiserations that you lost an hour's sleep. Um, and also hello to those of you who slept in and are catching up with us later on as well. It's still nice to see you. It is. It's lovely. And uh, a few of you asked us where the notices had gone. And so uh, we thought we'd have a few quick notices this morning. Um, these videos will remain on Facebook, so you can share the link with your friends. Uh, but for those of you without Facebook, you can let them know that we post the audio from the talks on our website and we'll also be uploading the video to our YouTube account. Mm, we feel very modern. Very modern. Um, our midweek groups are still continuing to meet um, and we're doing those via Zoom online video calls. Um, please do let us know if you'd like to join in with those. Um, we can kind of link you up with one of the small group leaders and would love to do that. It's kind of, it's a weird and interesting way of doing a new reality, but we love connecting with you guys. Mm -hmm. And it's been really good to realize that just that connecting in, praying with one another and just kind of seeing each other's faces has been so encouraging, hasn't it? Yeah, it's been fantastic. And it's a good way to look around each other's houses as well. So um, another notice, uh, Bible Book Club, it is still on. It's on again tomorrow, um, 11 a.m. And we're going to do it via a Zoom call. So if you'd like to join in, you can sign up through Church Suite um, and you can also sign up through the events calendar on our website and I will send out the link for the Bible Book Club for you to be able to join in. Um, I'm sure we're all really up to date with our Bible reading because we've had all this time to sit at home just reading it. So none of us will be behind. Allegedly. OK, um, well, yes. So if you'd like to join the lovely Maggie, um, oh. then uh, please do sign up and go on to that. Uh, Maggie, I'm going to lead some worship now. Right. So okay. shuffle you off the sofa. And great. Um, so we're going to have a short time of worship. Uh, so that means we're going to sing three songs together. Uh, we did email out um, some words for those of you that are on our email contact list. But if you want to kind of Google the words for the songs, um, then we're going to be doing Our God Saves by Brenton Brown and Paul Balosh. Uh, and then we're going to be doing King of My Heart by Sarah and John McMillan. And then we're going to be doing uh, a song that's, that's new to some of us, um, but we love it. And it's called All The Same, and it's by Terry Butler and Byron Aram. Um, so if you want to Google those and have a look for them, if not, just sing along. Uh, like we said before last week, you know, just be unselfconscious in worshipping together with us. We're all doing it in a weird way, but it's just great to know that as we sing, everyone else is doing the same. So um, let's pray and let's worship. Lord, we welcome you into our hearts, into our lives, and we ask that you would draw nearer to us now, that we know that your presence is with us and that we know that in times that may be anxious, that you are the bringer of peace and the bringer of hope and restoration and new life. And so we welcome you into our hearts this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Spirit, Lord, we come. We're gathered together to lift up your name. Call on a Savior, fall on your grave. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Spirit, Lord, we come, we gather together to lift up your name. Call on a Savior, fall on your grace. Be the 
joyful sound of our offering as your saints bow down as your people sing we will rise with you lifted on your wings and the world will see that our God saves our God saves there is hope
around the world Walks through every wall Your love searches for the lost Makes the foulest clean Reaches even me you loving us, each one of us. So we thank you and we receive your love. In your holy name, Jesus. Amen. Okay, I'd love to hand over to the lovely Maggie, who's now going to share the first in our series on the Beatitudes. Good morning. It's been really, really lovely to see all your names popping up and um, just to have that element of connection has been really, really good fun. Just to know that we're, we can still worship Jesus together uh, despite everything that's going on. Um, so we've been staying at home and staying safe for a week now as a family and it's gone okay. Um, we're starting to work out a kind of rhythm for this new way of life and, and ways to stop all the hours blurring together in one long blur of a holiday. and. Um, I just was wondering, you know, what's helped you this week? What's helped you get through this, this weird and strange time that we're in? And for many of us, it's been connection. 
connection with a small group or um, through a Zoom call or Netflix parties. Um, moments of connection and being community and family have been lifelines for many. And um, we had Nick's birthday this week and we, we shared birthday cake over a Zoom call with some dear friends. And uh, they put up a banner and they had a cake and we had a cake and we had candles. And it was really, really good fun. It was different, but it was fun. Um, and as a church community, we want to provide and join in with as many ways as we can to help combat this sense of isolation or loneliness that maybe some are experiencing. And uh, our message of hope is that we are never alone. Psalm 63 in the Bible, it says, He, God, sets the lonely in families. Our God is always with us and is always for us and gives us the church as a family. And I love my church family. And last week um, when I was here, I explored a passage in Romans 8 when we read the truth that God is for us. And Paul, the author of that book, he ends the chapter with this amazing statement. He says, for I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. And I love that truth, that we are so loved by God that nothing can get between that love. And it's an important truth, I think, for us to hold on to as we go through this present storm. And this week I want to look at another quite famous passage. I want to look at a passage at the beginning of the Sermon of the Mount in Matthew 5. And in this, Jesus begins this teaching passage with what have become called the Beatitudes, statements that all start with the same phrase, blessed are, or in some translations, happy are. And I say statements, but I think they're also invitations, invitations to a life lived differently, a life filled with realness and hope and purpose. And I'm not sure if you're feeling blessed or particularly happy this morning after a week of lockdown, you might well be feeling ragged or isolated or pressured. So what does Jesus mean? How might these sayings from so, so, so many, 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 many years ago, how might they speak into our global situation? Well, Jesus starts with this first one. He says, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Now, what does Jesus mean? Well, blessed, we're going to translate it kind of as happy, not, not a surface happiness, the kind that, of happiness that can be swayed by circumstance, but deeply happy. If I root my happiness in things, then my happiness is not secure. It could be fleeting because things, they come and they go. It was really sunny the day before yesterday. As I look out of the window in front of me, it's currently snowing. <laughs> things come and go. This kind of happiness that Jesus is talking about, this blessedness is a deeper, more secure, richer kind of happiness. And I was reading one biblical commentator called uh, DT France. I, I don't know who he is, but he said this. The world might say, blessed are the strong, the ones who exercise the force of their character, the ones who aggressively assert themselves, the ones who climb the ladder, the rich, the powerful, the ones who know how to manipulate the system, the ones who are willing to trample others to get ahead. It is a view of the world as a jungle and it's all about survival of the fittest. Isn't this the kind of happiness that we've been seeing with people stockpiling? People rooting their happiness in being safe in their own resources. But the blessedness or happiness that Jesus is referring to is not found in that expression. His expression of this blessedness is totally countercultural. It's an upside down way of thinking. Jesus is inviting people to live differently and to recognise that our self-sufficiency does not lead to true happiness. And so Jesus, he, he climbs a mountainside and he begins to teach his disciples how to live this kingdom life, how to live under the leadership of Jesus, a way of life that leads to becoming more Christ-like. And he starts with, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. It's a bit of a strange place to start, really. What happiness is there to be found in being poor in spirit or otherwise? Can there be happiness in a position that sounds so downtrodden? Surely I need my earthly securities in order to feel happy. Hmm. 
I read a story this week um, and it really, really struck me. It's of a, a story of a 72 year old Italian priest called Don Giuseppe Berardelli, and he was infected with COVID-19 and he chose to put others' lives before his own and he gave up his ventilator to save the life of a younger person and he died on the 15th of March. It really, really touched me, that story. Where did he root his blessedness and his happiness? In whom did he trust? Not in earthly things, but in the promise of all that is to come, in hope. And history has many, many stories like this, men and women who sacrifice so much, often their lives to help others. For many, the source of their sacrifice is an unshakable belief in a God who loves them and a confidence in a future hope. That's you right now. Perhaps it's all of us right now. Maybe what Jesus is really saying is there is a true happiness to be found in realising you can't do this on your own and you were never meant to. We were meant for a relationship with God. John Stott, a favourite of mine, um, in a, his book The Radical Disciple, he says God's purpose is to make us like Christ and God's way is to fill us with his Holy Spirit. As we recognise our need of Jesus, the one who invites us into a relationship of love, acceptance, forgiveness, peace, wholeness, true identity, the list just goes on and on. We are able to place our trust in God. We are filled with his Holy Spirit. God has a plan to help us grow in Christ likeness and it begins by embracing Christ's provision of everything we need for a godly life. So here's the promise. God will give you everything you need to honour him in every circumstance of your life. Letting go of the things that we cling to for security. There's a lot of that going on right now all around us. My Facebook feed has been inundated with pictures and articles of people celebrating a more back to basics lifestyle, a slower pace of life, a time for rest and spending time with people either in our homes or through social connection or technology. What do you cling to for security? This first beatitude requires honesty and humility from us. We need honesty because it's not easy to admit we can't do this alone. It's not easy to admit we're putting our trust in things that are fleeting. It's not easy to admit that we mess up, but we all do, all of us. And we need humility because we realise we need help. Will Donaldson, in his book on the Beatitudes, he says, honesty admits we need help. Humility enables us to go and find it. And as I look at the world around me right now, I can see that we need help. People are isolated, lonely, frightened. In genuine humility, we pray for help. We go to the source of all goodness. Last week, we saw many um, people light candles in their windows as a sign of prayer, as a sign of um, humility, calling out to God. And many of us will do this again tonight at eight, eight o'clock tonight. We will light a candle in our window to show our neighbours we are praying for them, for the world, for the NHS, for our key workers, for a cure. And we cry out to God because we realise that we are poor in spirit. We need him. And Jesus tells us that in that place of genuine humility, of putting our trust in God, the kingdom of heaven is ours. Mm. This passage in Matthew's Gospel echoes a wonderful passage in the Old Testament in Isaiah 61. It's a passage that Jesus himself read out in the synagogue. Um, the story is told in another gospel, Luke chapter four. And when Jesus read it out, he said that this passage had been fulfilled, ful fulfilled in him. It describes an incredible hope and I wanna read it to you. It goes like this. The spirit of the sovereign Lord is on me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness for the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour and the day of vengeance of our God and comfort all who mourn and provide for those who grieve in Zion. 
to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy, the planting of the Lord for the display of his splendour. They will rebuild the ancient ruins and restore the places long devastated. They will renew the ruined cities that have been devastated for generations. And a bit later on it says, and so you will inherit a double portion in your land and everlasting joy will be yours. As we look to the future, as uncertain as it might feel, there is hope and promise. The passage speaks about good news to the poor. We are all invited to be poor in spirit, to recognise that all we need is Jesus and we all need Jesus and can't do this alone. But you know the good news to the poor, the good news is that Jesus is available to all of us. He invites us all. I asked Nick to play that worship song this morning all the same because I love these words. You welcome the lover, the hater, believer, the doubter, the mighty, the broken, the pure and profane, the selfish, the giver, the loser, the winner, the righteous, the sinner, all the same. And I would like to invite you into that place of relationship with Jesus today. If you don't know Jesus and you want to meet with him today, wherever you are, whichever category you place yourself in from that song, then pray this prayer with me now. Why don't we all do it? Lord Jesus, I am sorry for the things I've done wrong in my life. Please forgive me. And I turn now from everything that I know is wrong. Thank you that you died on the cross for me so that I could be forgiven and set free. Thank you that you offer me forgiveness and the gift of your spirit. I now receive that gift. Come into my life by your Holy Spirit to be with me forever. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. If you have prayed that prayer for the first time, or if you are returning to the Lord after a time of maybe wandering away, we would love to hear your story. Get in touch through our social media or through our website and come and tell us your story. We'd love to direct you to a good church where you can learn more about this life of being a Jesus follower. We want to invite you into the family. Amen. Well, thank you so much for tuning in and joining with us in worship today. We'll be here again next week at 11am. But until then, here's a blessing to take with you. May the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ go with you, wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness, protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors. God bless you all. We love you. We miss you. And we can't wait to see you all again. Goodbye. Amen. Amen.